Welcome to the Forum, a CBNet Media production. We thank you for joining us. ChristianBody.net, knitting and knitting the body of Christ together. ChristianBody.net, you've got that correct. And uh, we're continuing on here with the forum. We have some things coming up. We've had a, an amazing discussion here this last half hour with Mark. Uh, we're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about the the uh, nearness. Uh, the scripture says the kingdom of, of God is near. It says it's upon us. It's just within us. Uh, huge, huge revelation in this as we look at this. And we may want to continue on this a little bit further. Um, Mark, you want, do you want to kind of take off where you left off and, and see where we go with that? If Unless you have anything else you want to touch on here. Uh, important stuff here. The kingdom of God. If we see the world faltering, we see earthquakes this morning, we see uh, uh, natural disasters occurring over the world, uh, we see a lot of confusion, we see wars, rumors of wars. The signs are here, aren't they? Huh. they these are the signs of our time, and, yeah. and again, even just the lawlessness in our day. Let's just top, top off with that one. Yeah. Uh, what is lawlessness? Well, uh, if Cipriano were on with us, he would say, you know, we have the Ten Commandments, we have, we have the Word of God that clearly says, look, this is right, this is wrong. If you do this, you'll be blessed. If you don't do it, you'll be cursed. Now, that sounds harsh, but look, God is God. God can say and do whatever he wants to do. That's what makes him God. The, the beauty of even the nation of Israel entering the Promised Land, remember you had the two different mountains, Gerizim and Mount Ebal, where you had the blessing and the curse. Every individual, and remember, this was a mixed multitude that had been wandering around for 40 years in the desert, wanting to get to the promised land, but the only way you're going to get there is by faith. And we talked about that in the last half hour. Believing, clinging to, relying in, and, and standing on that truth. Again, he's the solid rock. Who is it? Jesus. So we need to understand the times and the seasons that we're living in. This is the chaos of our day. Why? Because there's total peace in heaven. Right? We we see this lake of water around the throne of God. It's total peace. But in the midst of heaven and earth is the spiritual conflict that's going on. And what God wants is to bring that total peace onto this earth as it is in heaven. Not in the heavenly realm where the battle is, the spiritual battle of Ephesians 6. But that's part of the process. Honestly, I often think about, and there's been a lot of references over the years about uh, the butterfly and, and, and the caterpillar. And we often think the caterpillar kind of crawls in and makes its little cocoon and then decides to pop out a, a, a wing here and a wing there. And next thing you know, he's flying around as a butterfly. It is not that easy. What literally and scientifically happens, this is another case for science and evolution to argue over the biblical concept, is the, the caterpillar makes this cocoon and it literally is totally dissolved to nothingness and then is rebuilt into that butterfly. It's not, it's not a, an evolution type of process. Uh, like 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 the tadpole to the frog. This is total coming down. It's no longer at all the caterpillar that it was. It is now a new creation in the world, and it has to fight like a chick coming out of an egg. It has to fight. If you crack that egg and let the chick out sooner, or you crack that cocoon and let the butterfly, it will die. And so right now we're in this struggle. But the struggle is to birth the peace yeah. of heaven on earth. And when that happens, all of this goes away because this light dispels that darkness and the peace of God will be in your hearts and minds and all around the earth. This is kingdom that we have today. Are we fully in it? No. Are we fully in it? Yes. And it's how you're going to tap into that, whether you come to what the Bible says experientially. Remember, the Gospel of John says that, he, that this book is written 
So this is why I always drive new believers to the Gospel of John, that you may come to experientially know him, not just intellectually or showing up for a church service or a prayer meeting or an outreach, but experientially coming to know him. And the only way you're going to get that connection as God and Adam is depicted on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel is by being born again of the Spirit of God. That's where the revelation comes from. That's where truth is revealed. That's where love is revealed. And so many more gifts, talents, and abilities that God has placed in the body. Go ahead, Jim. Well, as you're talking about the process of metamorphosis and uh, of the caterpillar into a butterfly, and it's, it's a process, a very, very difficult process, as Nicodemus is asking how can I go into my mother's womb and be born again? Because that's born again is what it is. There's a born again experience that happens, and we call it also a, a transformation. There's a transformational change in the person's, how can I go into my mother's womb and, and be born again? He says, no, this is spirit, born of water and of spirit. It's a it's spiritual. The carnal man cannot perceive the things of the spiritual and so this is the problem out there. We we need to get to that point of finally coming to that. And each person has to get to that point of, of faith, of believing. <laughs> and that's that's that process. I mean, it's it's not easy. Some people struggle, struggle. They they don't understand. Like Nicodemus, a, a learned uh, Pharisee, uh, a leader of the Jews, and he's having trouble comprehending this thing as he begins to talk with Jesus. But Jesus does not. This is John, of course. Uh, Chapter 3, the Gospel of John 3, where he says this, and, and like ourselves, and we've got to kind of put ourselves in the mode, but we must be born again to see. But it's not an easy, easy find. But when you find it, when you find it, when you find experience it, like you said, experientially, we talk about born again experience. Well, I can talk about mine. I can't talk about yours, but I can tell you about mine. Finally, to the point of discovering of, of him revealing it to you, because that's what it is, a revelation revealing to you, him, Jesus, the Savior, be born again of a water and of spirit and entering in into this new life, being born again, being transformed of former things that passed away. We got to like throw away our old wine skin and a paradigm of thinking we're into a new new time. And, and that's kind of where we're at with the kingdom of God is at hand. Now we, we know, we know we're walking in the kingdom even right now. We're moving forward, how? By faith? But we have been transformed we have been metamorphosed into this new paradigm we call a new faith that we hadn't seen before now the eyes that were blind see the ears that are deaf hear there's been a conversion in our heart so now we see we see we understand i understand a little bit though but we understand by faith and we're going with what little bit we got and moving forward by faith in him in the son of god who loved us and gave himself for us so we're walking by faith and it's a work of faith not of uh, something that we earn but something that he has revealed to us, and we believe, and that's what is believed. And that's where Nicodemus, he finally saw it, not immediately, it took him a while. He don't come out, he don't show up until the very end of the gospel, where he got together with uh, Joseph of Arimathea to, to, uh, and the burial of Jesus. But he's the one that stood up as a witness. He stood up before as a witness to the Son of God. So it's a process with us out there that we to come into the, finally, the revelation of that. The kingdom of God is at hand. Can we see it? Can you take? I I can taste it now. I I can't fully see it, but I, I I'm seeing better than I used to before. And I'm trying to understand like what is life? Life, life is in Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. He's life, not death. We don't talk about death. We talk about life, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is life, life, and that's how we encourage one another. We're not, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I see, I assume that's not a bad thing to say, but Hebrew, excuse me, John 11, 11, 26, and that's kind of where I've been ha kind of hanging out there is, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he, he lives, and he that lives and believes in me shall never die. We, we are living. We will never die. We're going to go on. What about the death? Well, that's the process in the, on the way, but we're, we're going to see. And we believe, we see life ahead, but that's his promise to us. The simple John 3, 16, going back to that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this the promise of everlasting life relationship, living with him, being with him all the time, 
which we know are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in each one of us. We are alive. We have the Spirit of God in us. Man. And that Spirit of God, uh, Mark, you were talking about bringing perfect peace. Uh, we talked about the peace. And, and, and think about it. The declaration that we, we Christians look at at Christmas is uh, the, the kingdom of God. We see the, the angelic host saying, peace on earth, declaring a peace over the earth. This is what the gospel has done. This is what the advent of Jesus, uh, we're nearing that time of the year right now. Uh, that's the advent. That's when he comes. And he, the declaration of the angelic host, this is God's army. Peace on earth, where there has not been peace, is what I'm going to say here. There's been enmity between God and man since the time of Adam, since the time of the fall in the garden. And yet here is the declaration from heaven, the declaration directly from God, via his army of angels, peace on the earth and goodwill toward men. Now that's, that's the, folks, that is the, to me, that's the essence of the good news right there. Um, and, and there's peace. The other part of that, Mark, you touched on the, on the peace very uh, de in depth there, is the order of the kingdom. We're talking about the kingdom of God here. There, by the way, in the kingdom of God, there isn't any chaos. There isn't any confusion. There is perfect order all the time. And we have the option as human beings, we can opt to move toward that kingdom as we direct our faith, direct our trust to God Almighty in the by the blood of Jesus Christ, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we trust in him, we can enter into that. And, and Mark, I don't know about you, that, that is outstanding. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable news uh, to be able to just to an anticipate that, look at that, a little, you know, grab a hold of that. We've been looking at that this morning. And by the way, this is radical. This is a radical outlook for normal Christianity, I would say. Uh, where we many times in, in normal Christianity, well, we go to church, we do various things, and, and uh, we feel like God has, you know, has had us do that. But is that really what the total is about? There is, seems to be, as we're looking here, the gospel of the kingdom is much bigger than, okay, I go to church, and I do the things I'm supposed to do as a Christian. Um, I, and this is... <laughs> We have to be careful here. We're not we're not put uh, against people that are that are walking in that. I think probably all of us have walked in that, but that's not the fullness of the gospel. That's just maybe just a little little glimpse of it. God has so much more for His people, doesn't He, Mark? Yeah, think about Jesus uh, telling the disciples, you know, I have so much more to tell you, but I can't tell you now. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. handle it. So I look at it this way, uh, and again, if you look at Matthew. Uh, on with the gospels the life of jesus again the bible tells us was under the law he was he was bringing the kingdom the fullness of time to come for jesus to show up have his boots on the ground literally or his sandals on the ground i should say and and really begin to drop seed into the soil that's why he talked about the seed being the word and us being the soil, whether it's rocky or or whatever, you know. So, so the interesting thing for me is the process of watching Jesus. And again, he was not tearing down the Word of God because, again, Paul writes in the New Testament, the law is pure, the law is perfect. It was there for a reason, and we cannot discount it. It doesn't get get obliterated and abolished. It gets fulfilled in the person of Jesus, but he drops it in. Let me give you one example, and I've shared it here before. But the idea of, of the parable, and again, these are, these are stories based on truth. God is bringing revelation. You can go to Matthew, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard it said, but I say unto you, it's clarification. It is not annihilation. It is clarification. He's saying, yes, this is the word of God, but it's been taught at this level instead of this level. And so he is clarifying. Right. So, for instance, when he says, you know, you can get 30, 60 or 100 fold. Well, who doesn't want 100 fold? We think 100 is the best. 
right? We think 100 is the best. It's 100%. When I was a manager in the supermarket industry, I wanted my cashiers. I wanted my workers. They were all based on numbers. Are you are you working at 75%, 80%, 100%? I want my people at 125%. But the truth is, that is still under the law that Jesus is teaching as he is taking them by the hand to lead them to himself, coming to me, and then bring in the new and better covenant. Why is it a new and better covenant? And I've shared it here, Deuteronomy 1, I believe it's beginning in verse 9. But Moses is declaring to the nation of Israel that God has blessed you 1,000 times more. Well, would you rather have 100 or 1,000? The old covenant is the old covenant. And the 100% that we read about that is just drip dropping and moving us along the way, you know, little bright light, little bit of bright light to get us into the fullness of the light. It is a step by step, like a baby crawling and then and then walking and then running and then becoming a, a teenager and an adult. We need to understand there's a process. And that's where Proverbs 4 comes in as far as the path of the righteous shines ever brighter until the full light. So I will declare to you, and I believe this to be absolutely truth, that the new and better covenant is even better than what Jesus taught us about the 30, 1600. Because if the time of Moses could bring you a thousand times increase, what was Jesus doing other than taking us by the hand to lead us into the promised land, literally? and the new and better covenant, the real kingdom. Because, again, Israel was God's kingdom, but that kingdom was to be spread over all the earth. And that's what we're about now. We're not doing it. We're sent by God, and we're going in the gifts, talents. He's going before us, and we are fulfilling the works that he has already prepared for us to do. The question is, what is that work? Number one is you taking a step of faith into the kingdom and then taking a step of faith all through the kingdom, as his Holy Spirit leads and guides you to take and make the kingdom a reality here on earth. It's, it's never, it, it, it seems so simple, so bizarre. Again, you can only do it, not by your own might or power, and that's both Old and New Covenant, but by my spirit. But don't settle for 100% when you can have a 1,000. Amen. Don't settle, because as you say, Grover, God is bigger than Google. Amen. You're going to get more information out of the Word of God that is the living Word of God. And I've been in this for 41 years. Jim Grover, you've been in it as long, if not longer. The Word of God is living. I don't ever read it and not get something new, fresh out of it. It's not a black and white or red letter print word that's dead. It is alive by the Spirit of God. It cuts to the bone and the marrow, and it gets the job done. Don't be here when God wants you here. Yes, we're here on earth, but he wants us seated in heavenly places. Amen. And he wants that to work 24-7, 365. So that's that's my brief Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, Mark. question. <laughs> but this is the opportunity for the youngest of believers. Again, if you're yeah. if you're again a toddler, you're not gonna be running around. You're not gonna be running the race, you know, but but you will grow into that. And so wherever you are. Be on, be open, be honest, and let God have his way with you because he has a way, and that's Jesus, and he's going to show himself mighty in your midst. Amen. I have a, a, a quick... To steal. Go ahead, Jim. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I call that you might, what does it say, have life, and have it abundantly. You know, mm -hmm. talking about the... I go back with the other 160, 40, okay, 100 fold. That's not 100%. This is our limited thinking of 100%. We're talking about full. 100 full times. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about stuff that is just not, as we as we speak the word, it happens. And I think we, we've seen it, uh, Grover and Mark on Christian Body done that things have exploded, okay? And just in obedience, do your part. In obe obedience, what he tells you, you do your part, I do my part. And as we come together, as we do our parts together, corporately as a body, things explode. And they and they go not not well tenfold. It goes. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Grow, remember it. But uh, uh, logarithmically, there you go. Logarithmic. Log I like it. Scale. You you can't plot it. In other words, you can't. You can say, well, I'm going to plot it here. We did ten, and I'm going to put it on a piece of paper. You know, throw your paper away. 
because that paper don't have enough room. It's going to go beyond maybe 10, 10 of your pages if you put it to scale. But logarithmic scale means it's put it down so you can see the 10, the 100, <laughs> a thousand, you know, fold out there as we, as we speak the word. And that's the way we go about preaching. Preach the word of God. And I keep saying this, I was saying it the other day regarding a lot of preaching that we do sometimes. This was at our Tuesday uh, prayer meeting that we had yesterday when we're, we're, we're speaking God's word, but we want to sanitize it with my version of uh, my, we're going to like tell a story. And I've seen this done and it's good to tell stories. I'm not against stories. Preach the word, the whole word, say the word. There's power when you speak that word out in its context <laughs> and, and the way that it is expressed. There's power. There's something about the Word of God, quick, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the vision, soul and spirit, joint and marrow. As we see that happens, all of a sudden it, it exposes, it explodes. People see it. Their eyes are open, and they're exposed openly of what they are, the carnal man that we are. We need to grow up to become that spiritual man to see God and things that he's doing right before our eyes. There's things happening. You don't understand it. I can't understand myself in the point of finger anybody what God does with that word. But as it goes out, there's an expression even in the, the, the little groups that we have to get. As you speak it, I can see the expression in people's faces. They're like astounded. It's they're, they're hit to the quick, as we say. Uh, when you do horseshoeing out there, there's a place called quick and the horse hoof. As you put the nail in, you stay out of the quick. That's where you feel the pain, but it, it, it penetrates you, hits you in the quick, where, you, where it's going to, you're going to respond to it, because there's going to be not only pain, but it's an understanding of things. And I, I see the light bulbs, that we can use the expression of light bulbs, light bulbs going on. We see it going across, even across the different countries, as we were with Uganda, speaking with Michael and, and uh, uh, Patricia, and uh, forget the, Eric, was it Eric? Uh, seeing the expression in their faces as, as we're talking about as the pastor in the TV station in Uganda, their eyes were like opening up as they were seeing the impact, the potential impact of as the pastor internationally. How can that happen with the TV station out of Uganda that could could go beyond beyond the continents as we speak continentally across the world? This is the word of God going. And that's his hand working by his mighty right hand. He's going to deliver. He's going to go. And we preach the gospel. I say, like this word was talking about the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, right now it's here. We have his power in us. We are the temple of God and the spirit of God is in us. As we speak, things explode. It's not you. It's the spirit of God in you. As you speak it out, you're speaking his word and it's exploding here. And I just see it, it's it's a di- logarithmically scale, it's going out there, impacting all people. Amen. We're going to have life and have it abundantly. Yeah. I. You know, the one of the places that we look scripturally and we see that is in Ecclesiastes. And it says, if one puts a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. That, my friend, is exponential. It's logarithmic. It, it, it goes up by a factor of ten. Every time you multiply, you know, t- ten times one, or one times ten is, only, is ten. That doesn't sound like too much. But if you take that one more, one more zero, ten times ten is a hundred. Ten times a hundred is a thousand. Ten times a thousand is ten thousand. That's what we're talking about. And uh, and that's what the the kingdom is like. That one of the, I just want to just share a little quick uh, personal insight here. Years ago, the I felt like the Lord was really revealing, trying to stir me in this very area, just trying to encourage me and make me expand my understanding of some of these things by the Holy Spirit. And I felt like He was He showed, um, you know, in the natural we have an IQ intelligence quotient is what that's called and that's kind of a a rating of how how smart we are let's just say it that way uh to make it very oversimplified anyway but the average human iq i understand is 100 or something in that range 100 but what i thought the lord was trying to reveal and it's what we're you guys have been talking about here according to the scripture according to biblical context and testimony is that when we come to know the lord we don't have our iq changes 
and this is a, this is about us but there's just one little aspect i'd like to share when when we come into the kingdom our iq becomes unlimited what do you think of that it's no longer because it's no longer our mind we have the mind of christ and the infinite mind of god is touching by his holy spirit into our life into our soul into our understanding into our intellect into our, our iq okay and this is the infinite aspect of the kingdom of god coming to bear on us personally this is only one of the aspects there's many it's awesome it's bigger than anything we can imagine but how would you like to have an iq of a thousand jim wouldn't that be kind of cool i mean I it, we're looking at it from right from our right my perspective you know <laughs> <laughs> But you know, they say that Einstein only used ten percent of his brain. Yeah. Of course, we know him as a genius. But but what if he used a hundred percent of his brain? And and you know, this is the thing because you mentioned the angels earlier, Grover. Uh, Peace on earth, goodwill toward yeah. all men. This was prophesied and promised. Yes, from the yeah. time of Moses, pointing to the one that was coming. But God spoke to Israel through the Psalms, through the prophets, through the through the writings. Um, saying that I will walk among my people, I will visit my temple. This is this is the birthing again. This is just the beginning, and it's a proclamation. It's a declaration. It it, it is the evangel, the 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 shouting out uh, for all the world to see and hear that peace, God's shalom, is on earth as it is in heaven. God's peace is on earth. And and yet it was just the beginning. As I said, at 12 years old, he's saying, I must be about my father's business. Well, from 12 years old, we hear nothing at all about Jesus other than in other writings, which don't always match up to scripture, until he's 30 years old and getting baptized. Oh, we knew he was a carpenter, right? But the idea is there's a progression in this. There's a revelation. So for you and me today, and this is hard, I believe, you know, I've been part of the Jim knows the, the prayer group out of Roswell over the past 30 days. We're just getting ready to wrap that up. But we saw people who at one point would say, no, I'm not going to pray out loud. No, I, I don't feel comfortable praying in groups. No, Next thing you know, they're proclaiming, they're decreeing, they're declaring, they're prophesying, they have words of wisdom, words of why, because they have tapped in to the truths of God, to the word of God, to the spirit of God that again begins to move in and through them. We abide, and the fruit comes out. And this this is something that unless you say, yes, peace will come. Jesus himself said, peace, peace, there'll be no peace. Well, of course, there's not going to be any peace until he is completely here and over and done with, and sin is cast into the hellfire. We need to understand that. There will be no real peace other than the peace of God that passes all understanding by the very breath of God that gave us his peace, and he is our peace. He's the peace of Jerusalem. There will be no peace in Jerusalem until he's ruling and reigning there. And so we need to understand that, not to be discouraged by it, but are you proclaiming it? Are you declaring it? Are you decreeing it? Are you praying it? Are you working toward that peace? The, the idea of uh, being at peace with all men, yet the Bible goes on to say as much as you can be. So the responsibility is on us to be at peace. We're the church, we're the light, we're the soul. The responsibility, the accountability is on us. And that's a heavy responsibility and accountability. But it's not based on us. It's about the work that God has done. And even in our weakness, God's going to show his strength. If we let him do that instead of walk in the flesh and move and speak in the flesh. If it's by my spirit, says the Lord, believe me. God watches over his word to perform it. And so if we are proclaiming peace, if we are praying peace, if we are peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. We're, that's us. Jesus is our peace. And we need to let him be known by voice because faith comes by hearing, by sight because it's revelatory, not only in our mind and understanding. It is, as Grover says often, we are here. And Jesus came to show us the way to the Father. Here I am, I'm the way, he says, right? But he, what was he showing us? 
the way to the Father. And until the church, until us as believers, believers or disciples, followers, whatever you want to call yourself, we are to do the same thing. And the only way you're going to do that is by his spirit. So if you're not in it, you're out of it. And if 